I go forward into 2022 and I see an economy that's continuing to expand. I see continued economic problems. I see a political environment that continues to keep the government from doing what it needs to do to improve the financial system. Welcome to Stockpole Silver Symposium 2021. We're in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. We've got with me Jeff Christian from the CPM Group. Jeff, appreciate you making the trip all the way over from the East Coast to, to Coeur d'Alene here to see, talk about some silver. It's good to be here and I appreciate being invited to come back. Yeah, that's uh, fantastic and uh, hopefully we could make this an annual thing here. So let's get into silver here. Actually, the, I, let's, before we get into silver, let's get into what dictates silver maybe. And that's the playing field I call it, maybe the conditions. So yeah. maybe let's run through, I don't know, how you see the atmosphere here of the general economy and then we'll work backward. Yeah. Well. We look at the world and we see an enormous number of problems, political, economic, financial. Most of them are actually solvable, but the political will is not there in the United States and on a global basis to really address those issues. So we're not looking for the world to collapse the way some people in gold and silver are, but we are looking for future recessions and future financial crises and a much more hostile political environment, both domestically in the United States, domestically in other countries, uh, and on a global international uh, relations basis. And so we look at all of that and we put it together. That's our top-down uh, analysis of the world, the environment that the environment that conditions gold and silver and all the other metals. And then we meld that with a, a, a microeconomic analysis of the silver market. And we say the silver market's in a uh, pretty well set up, not to rise sharply over the next five quarters, but probably to rise sharply when the next recession comes, when the next financial crisis comes. And our wet finger in the air is that probably somewhere in the 2023, 2025 time zone. So right now we're record low interest rates. Um, I don't think the Fed can really do much. Maybe you can speak to that. But aren't they in position now to where the environment should be? pretty good for gold and silver right now and you're talking maybe a little further out well I think that you're actually in a sweet spot economically and you know there's a one of your other speakers was talking about how everything's falling everything's not falling so you look at the dollar and the dollar is off a little bit from its peak earlier this year but the dollar is about 20 25 percent higher than it was in the average period from 2004 to 2014 so the dollar's not off the dollar's not falling Inflation is rising, but it, I think the Fed's got it right and it's transitory. If you look at like the most recent inflation data, uh, people look at it, well, August data from, compared to August 2020, you had 5.3% headline, 4.0% core. But if you look at it from July to August, it was incredibly positive from an economic perspective. The only thing that was rising more than 2% July to August was oil-based energy prices, which had been rising 30, 40, 45 percent in previous months, and it was down to about 2 percent. Everything else was falling or below 2 percent growth. So that tells you that the Fed's probably right that a lot of the inflation that we're seeing now is transitory. I go forward into 2022 and I see an economy that's continuing to expand. I see continued economic problems. I see a political environment that continues to keep the government from doing what it needs to do to improve the financial system. Uh, I'm looking at interest rates staying low for a long period of time. I'm looking at T-bill rates staying negative, which they've been negative for about 13 years now. And the Fed, and we agree, that uh, they're probably going to stay negative for at least the next decade. So we're looking at low interest rates, lower inflation figures, stronger economic activity and we put that together with our fundamentals on silver and we think that the price of silver sort of treads water for the next five quarters but then when you get into that next period 2023 which happens to coincide with the next presidential election uh, cycle um, and a new congress whatever it, it's composed of we think that when you get into that beyond 2022 you're going to see a more hostile economic environment which will cause investors to go increase their demand now, investors bought very little silver 2017, 18, and 19. They bought twice as much silver in 2020 as they did in 2018 and 2019. They're buying more this year, 
although that was mostly front-loaded in the first half of the year and it's kind of gotten a little bit weak now. We think that it might stay relatively high but come down a little bit in 2022 and then move to much higher figures the next time we have an economic crisis. So if Jeff Christian was in charge of financial policy, what would he be doing right now? I think that the Fed probably is doing a pretty good job. As I said to somebody here the other day, do you really feel comfortable co complaining about Jerome Powell's job when Elizabeth Warren is complaining about his job? <laughs> you know, uh, I actually think that the Fed is doing pretty much what it needs to do. The Treasury, the government needs to do what it is. But you know what? You can go back to Paul Volcker in the 80s. You can go back to, to Greenspan in the 80s and 90s into the 80s. And the Fed kept saying, look, the Fed manages monetary policy. We can stanch the bleeding during a recession. We can keep the economy from rolling over into a depression as they did in 2008, 2009. But the real fixes have to be fiscal policy, and that's the Congress and the administration. And the Congress and the administration have been dysfunctional, I would say since the 1980s, but the reality is it goes back to at least the end of World War II. Yeah, so you, you made a mention here that you expect uh, um, economic growth. Mm -hmm. In what sectors? Well, I think one of the sectors that you'll see uh, slowly recovering is the auto sector. It's been constrained this year because of the chips uh, shortages. The chip shortages are going to continue probably well into the first half of next year, but I think that you'll see some increased de uh, demand there. You'll probably start to see uh, continue a, a recovery in housing construction. Uh, commercial real estate is in a surplus, and that's a problem. You also probably see more increase in business equipment as companies move to computerized manufacturing, computerized service uh, provision, you know, restaurants, fast food restaurants and everything, and computerized agriculture. You now have machines. You know, one of the problems we've had this year, which has been inflationary, is problems with a lack of farm workers, partly because Americans don't want to do that, and we also don't want uh, foreigners coming in. So we've kind of shot ourselves in the foot there. But there have been any number of companies that have come up with agricultural computers to do the planting, to do the weeding, and to do the harvesting. So I think you're gonna see business equipment rise, and that's always a leading indicator of further growth. And then you also see disposable incomes rising, so you'll see consumer um, expenditures rising, and that'll help consumer durables as well as restaurants out uh, and, and other factors. So bringing this all the way around here for closing comment in regards to silver as we are at a silver symposium, mm -hmm. a lot of silver bugs around here, a lot of companies, you may not be their favorite guy uh, with some of your commentary, you may not be, you may, may be too, I don't know. But but, but give, uh, give investors, obviously they can uh, track your work here, the CPM group, right. and you can tell us how to maybe look, follow you, but uh, give us a final closing comment here. Give, give us some hope here, Jeff. <laughs> well, as I said, I do think that the silver price and the gold prices are both going to rise sharply, just not in 2022. Uh, I wouldn't be overly enthusiastic for the next recession, but I do think that there's 100% certainty that there will be future recessions. And when that happens, I think a lot of investors will be buying gold and silver. And the prices of both, we expect to reach record levels, high above the record previous record levels in the next upward leg. People have been asking us, or, you know, was the bull market over? Did the bull markets for gold and silver peak in August of 2020? And we said, no, that was the first leg of it. Now we're in a consolidation phase. We expect the second leg that will be at least as big for gold from 2016 to 2020 and from silver for 2020. I mean, silver really didn't really start upward movement until last year. Uh, but we do think that these things have the capacity to rise to record levels. But I think you would curb your enthusiasm. One last thing that I would say is, you know, some of the people who try to sell gold and silver based on fear may not like us. But the silver producers, especially the ones that take our advice, really like us because we've kept them from making bad decisions and we've helped protect them from adverse price moves. How do people follow you, Jeff? This sharp little book right here, huh? CPMgroup.com. You can read all about us. You can get all kinds of free reads. You can buy the silver yearbook, the gold yearbook, the platinum yearbook, and you can contact us at info at cpmgroup.com about the consulting services we do. That's Jeff Christian. Jeff, thanks for making the trip to Coeur d'Alene. My pleasure.